Well, hello everybody. Welcome, I'm so glad to see you. This is my first Blender conference, and it's amazing. Now, I would love to see some hands. Who are animators in this room? Oh, great. Well, the rest is like, what is this guy gonna say? Let's see. Um, let's get started. Um, I would love to uh, get into some character animation uh, going over the latest um, uh, Aina rig. So let's just uh, delete the, the def wait. What the, f what, what Blender version is this? Come on, another cube? Well, let's just delete this one. Oh, can we, oh, wait. <sighs> oh no, how can I? <laughs> it has children. How can I do this? <laughs> Guys, I think we just have to animate the default cube today. <laughs> now, put down your weapons, put down your pitchforks, it's gonna be all right. And first off, who is this random guy speaking in front of you? Let me, um, you give me a little bit of track record. Do we have audio here? Yeah. I don't hear it. Well, is there audio or should I do something around here? Let me try a different uh, player here. Uh, and give me a sec. Okay. Uh, wait. Hello. <laughs> okay. Let me try again. Okay, from the beginning. Um. I know you snuck out last night, Morales. Play dumb. Who's Morales? Not that dumb. Hey! hey that's that, that's a no-no. We don't like that. This is fascinating. Okay, that's that's my face. It's so boring. You're going to the cookie cell, you're going to take selfies, and you're going to have fun and bond! Now put on the uniform! It's really cute! Or at least it was. I was pretty happy when I didn't know about the small fun. Or the SES or how amazing Michi really is. And I'm pretty sure I'd be happier not knowing that they hate me. <laughs> I'm so relieved. Oh, hi. Hey. <laughs> hi. Hi. Hey, I told you he was alive. My brother. Oh, Migo. Oh, whoa, 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 guys, easy, easy, easy. Because it isn't true. <gasps> but I, I saw one. They called us Sasquatch. They called us a bomber. was my best friend. Oh, thank you. I knew you'd come around. I'm gonna go get the small flip. Bye! And what dimension are you from? We go to the beat of our own job. We're a girl in a world full of ho-hum. I'm a wild young lady, but you don't stop. I'd rather be a home with a whole job. Bounce! 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 Where'd you go? All right, so that's a bit, bit of a, a dusty old show reel, but uh, my name is Rick Schutte. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands, and I'm proud to, you know, say the ch very, very uh, pronounced. Um, now, this is uh, the work that I did before I started Blender, and uh, I started on Sprite Frights. 
uh, uh, and uh, are currently uh, almost wrapping up uh, the movie charge. Um, but I also would love to show you a little bit of um, something else I actually did in Blender uh, in my spare time, and that is uh, one sec. Here we go. Well, once upon a time, I was walking in the jungle, and I and then I, and I stopped. Then I knew I was surrounded with coyotes, and the, and one of the biggest coyotes laughed at me, and I did the, the double eye poke, and that made them startled, and and they let go of me. And then I and I went to my mommy and daddy. So for me, this was a, a great like side project to go through the whole pipeline of Blender. I did the the modeling and the rigging. It was very eye opening and uh, painful sometimes, but also you know the the. The beauty of creating your own thing, I think, is uh, um, yeah sometimes very rewarding. Um, but let's go back to uh, our our slide here. Why are we going to animate the default cube? You might ask, because with all these beautiful characters that Blender provides, we go back in time to Big Buck Bunny coming on this. Uh, even the sprite fright characters. Why do we animate four, nay, wait, eight vertices? <laughs> okay, okay. Now, there's a couple of reasons. Let me get my notes ready. Why exactly? Um, guys, we gotta have a little faith in the good old default cube here. The most rejected object in <laughs> history of Blender. Um, you know, we gotta f think about its feelings. Think about its children. It might have been a long, longer than some of you guys. So, let's for once not despise it. Let's not delete it. Give it a chance. And breathe some character into the default cube. Also, I mean, we could animate a high triple A top-notch character and imitate Pixar or DreamWorks or, you know, but we're common people here. We are the working man working with Blender. And also, we sometimes don't have the right client. We have a client that pays us 10 bucks for a 10-minute movie. Or we have, uh, you know, some of us who work still on the Pentium 2 laptop and work with Blender 1.6. But they have the default cube. So, and for me, the reason to animate the default cube is simply because we only have 50 minutes and now it's even less. So, I pick my battle and let's get into it. Well, there you go, guys. Any questions? I'll uh, see you at the bar. <laughs> All right, now some of you as animators, you know about the 12 principles of animation to make this a little bit more awesome. One of them is adding a little bit of squash and stretch. Well, that already gives us a bit more information of what the cube, how it feels, how it goes. And let's crank that up a little bit. And uh, you know, Adding some simple uh, uh, deformation, some changing in, in, the, in the shape is already gives us a different feeling of basically the same animation that we uh, initially started with, just a bouncing cube. Now, let's see if we just can make this, uh, this cube walk. Well, there we go, walking cube. Now let's dis dissect that a little bit because it's only eight vertices and what are we actually looking at Whoop. Wait a minute, what's going on? There we go. So, um, does this work? Yes, great. So what we're looking at is uh, with these eight vertices, we, uh, I try to, you know, imagine what 
and try to kind of like get to the core of what this walk is about. And these uh, four vertices right here, they kind of like mim mimic the, the torso, the hips of, of the character, while these lower ones uh, basically f uh, function as, uh, as a foot. Now we don't have a knee, but who, not, who, who needs a knee, right? It's, uh, it's already working. So here we have it, walking beautifully in world space. How about a run? Now, if you squeeze your eyes, you can see Moana running right here. Uh, no? <laughs> uh, it's basically, you know, the, all the principles of, 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 um, of animation are applied to either a cube or a very high defini de defined character. And uh, one of the main rules with, with a run is you make sure that there's definitely that moment where both feet come off the ground and really pick and choose, uh, uh, especially with eight vertices, where to put them. All right, here's a beautiful cube running around. He's so happy. Let's make him more happy. And now we have a jolly walk. Oh. And here we, and you already feel the music, you know. And then the next one, we try to, you know, Create a little bit more stereotypical female kind of walk. And you know, this is where <laughs> I wish we had a little bit more curvature, but we only have eight vertices here. Uh, so we really try to kind of uh, evoke the feeling of, of having a maybe a tight dress makes us and, and some, some heels that come out of it. And uh, whoop, there we go. And of course, uh, we have a, a tired walk here, and it's all about like pacing, pacing, timing, spacing, uh, the posture, but um, um, and all of these these elements we can apply the twelve principles of animation. Uh, I can't remember them all, but <laughs> for a cube, you kind of pick and choose uh, which one, and one of them is make sure that the posture feels like uh, um, you know a tired cube here. And this is me after the first week of learning Blender. And, uh, you know. <laughs> but uh, we don't give up, guys. We keep on going. <laughs> um, and anyway, we also animated the snail, so we can check that one off. Now, how about an animal? And I wonder, guys, what, what, what kind of elements do we need to make a, an animal run? Anybody? Shout. Quadrupeds. Quadrupeds. We need four legs. Right. What else? One leg always on the floor. One leg always on the floor. Okay. Locomotion. Anybody? Locomotion is very important where we have this going on. <laughs> so here we go. A running animal. And if you squint your eyes, you might see a rabbit or uh, a cow. I don't know. Uh, but it's very... Um, uh, and in this... In this particular uh, cycle, I really had to, um, uh, with the current rig, and we will jump into this, this actual rig in a second, uh, um, uh, rotate the rig around and really uh, uh, have a different setup to make sure that it feels like it has uh, four legs. And if we go a little bit frame by frame through it, I try to kind of like offset the front paws vertices and uh, go through it. And of course, like, let's say it's a rabbit and, you know, Rabbits, they do what they do. <laughs> and, um, yeah, you show a little respect for this default cube, man. It's trying to, uh, you know, push, push all the vertices to, uh, to their limits. Um, what else do we got? How about a fight? So, you know, I, over the last uh, week, I had a ton of fun uh, trying out different things and how far we can push, push the animation. And it's, it's all about uh, trying to mimic posture, trying to mimic a certain motion with the least amount of, of info, info that is there. But it's all uh, relying on these basic principles, like really going into an anticipation, trying to stretch the body a bit, and then 
go up here. And this, I try to go for some kind of a carotid kick kind of feeling. I mean, yeah, something like, <laughs> like that. And then here we do a nice twist in the blue cube turns into a cube. So let's uh, jump into the rigs. But for, before we do that, you know, I said I animate everything. I also animate this QR code for you guys. If you want to, you can uh, scan it and get the cube rig, including all of the animation. Don't worry, it also will be on the studio website, but uh, this is something that uh, you can all uh, try and play with. It will be there for 10 more seconds, 10, nine. And so, so this is from my uh, <laughs> local Google Drive, so it might not work exactly, but it will be there on the studio website shortly. All right, now, how do I close this thing? And then jump into, don't save. Give me a sec here, we go to desktop, Blender. Here we go. And then, Default cube. Uh, which one do we get? I think it's this one. Open. All right. So this is the file that um, we're looking at. And let me just explain a little bit about the rig. It's a bit more advanced than the default cube, obviously. Uh, also, let me actually go and reset this. Uh, oh, this keyboard is a bit wonky. There you go. So it's basically uh, the, all, everything from, from the torso to, to, uh, always, uh, to the whole way down. Um, so we're working with a, a torso. And you know, it has a bit more polygons in between, so we can actually uh, do some twists and turn, and, and it, it keeps. If you want to go really hardcore, you go to zero, and that's only for, um, you know, for uh, eight vertices, basically. Then we have some, well, <laughs> what can you call it, feet. Uh, and within these feet, there are some, some uh, uh, cool pivot points that we can place either in the front or the back to create some sort of a foot roll. Um, I have to mention this rig has been created by the one and only Demeter, one of the uh, riggers at the uh, Blender Studio. And uh, I, I guess this is one of his. <laughs> One of the most advanced rigging so far. Um, so let's jump into some of these these uh, runs and walks. Uh, so they're all here. Um, now, by default, I've turned off the the Z location. If you turn that one on, I think it's yeah, it's walking walking in Z space. And uh, a quick you know little trick that I do for any walk cycles is uh, because, you know, you don't want to, uh, sometimes I do it to eyeball the actual Z, uh, um, the Z translation in world space. There are different ways to animate a cycle. Some people animate their cycle actually in world space and then revert their um, uh, root bone to, to keep it in place. Uh, but for this, um, I basically grab the um, the foot bone here and go to the graph editor and I take these keys because this is basically the Z translation and uh, for a default walk like this uh, uh, I always tend to keep these uh, uh, interpolation being linear just so we have that consistency uh, when we animate in world space. So I copy these keys and then I go to the and of course, it's already there. So I basically, uh, let me delete those. And then select it. There we go. It's, wait a minute, this is a rotation, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Did I delete? Wait. Oh, it doesn't have a. Okay, 
turn it to linear, and now it's walking backwards. So what we need to do, we need to reverse it. Simply, I press S, and I press Y, minus one. Wait, why doesn't that work? S. You need to change the up there on the right. Oh. The scaling is worked right next to nearest frame. Oh my gosh, this one? Ah, yes, thank you, thank you. I mean, thank you, man, I appreciate it. So, S, Y, there we go, minus one, there we go. And then we put on the modifier and turn on the cycle and then repeat with offset. And that should basically get us uh, a solid walk cycle within uh, world space. All right, so um, let's go over some other. So we have the jolly walk and then animal run. And here you can see like I turned around the, uh, the, um, the body control and basically animated it uh, upside down. You could make this into, you know, a rig setting where you s switch, but uh, you know, I'm a simple animator and I, uh, love to have the freedom to do that my, myself. One other fun thing here is to uh, actually have the subdivision after the armature. So right now we see this and then we turn it on. And now of course we need to turn this one on. And now we have some, some curvature uh, uh, interpolation. And there you can like have a bit more sense of the actual locomotion going on from the back to the front. Uh, and you know you can you can play around with the timing and spacing whatever you need. Um, so that's that. Now let's jump into some actual animation here. Um, let me see. We have animation demo open. Now. Mind me, <laughs> I already did some animation. I didn't want to start and struggle from scratch. It's like putting down my pants and I uh, rather do that uh, in the bathroom. So I animated this cube and it f rolls into screen. Wait, how long is this? Let me actually go here. And then turn down the timeline. Cube runs in, falls into screen, comes to life, and farts his way out of the screen. So, it's kind of like, uh, you know, just having some fun here. Uh, I want to add some texture. And what I mean with texture and animation, uh, it's not a checkerboard, it's really adding little detail to make the animation more tangible. Like if you add, uh, let's say, small texture into somebody who's afraid, you might do a little bit of shaking, just to add a bit more resolution to, to what is there. Now, what I want to do here is, uh, when it's going up, I want to have this cube, he's jumping up, and then he has to fart, okay? Uh, I want to have him compress his butt cheeks, and then release the fart, and then have a bit of, you know, jiggle going on with. So let's get started and try that. Here we go. I'm just selecting these four vertices that uh, we can control individually. Uh, before I do that, let me go over some of the existing animation and just, you know, uh, explain a bit of, of how I kind of like Get, got there. Uh, what I really like about this, uh, you know, rig setup, what, whatever it's, it is at, um, is some of the features like a, um, a hold on, a, a dynamic pivot point. So you can pl place this pivot point wherever you want, and that way you can actually roll the dice on a different pivot point than, you could either use this or the 3D cursor, which I uh, also use. But it's a, a nice way to have this roll like a dice, basically, and have a little bit of uh, um, overlap, uh, overlapping animation when it's, it's settling down, settling down. 
Uh, also, I found out when I was animating, I ended up uh, uh, with the feet on the side, but ultimately I want to actually make him jump up. So on run frame, I mean, all the render people here with motion blur are gonna hate me, but this is not gonna be rendered. Um, it's basically within one frame, I switch the, the whole rig 90 degree. Um, and one great tool with that is the global transform tool, where you can basically, with any constraint going on, copy the global transform and paste it, uh, and that way I could uh, easily do that. Now, what we see here is basically the up and down, uh, the up and down uh, motion of, of the cube, and uh, I do a little bit of a anticipation here. I didn't animate the feed, we can do that in a second. And then we jump up here. And as you can see, like I try to make that as smooth as possible. And then the fart is gonna counter, we <laughs> launch him up into the air right here. If we have some time, I might do some grease penciling uh, because I love to add some 2D animation into it. But let's see how much time uh, uh, yeah, we, we still have left in a, in a bit. So first off, butt cheeks. So I want to make sure we have the bounding box center so I can scale them all at once. So let me look through the camera. Um, I'm a bit spoiled with having two screens at my desk. So normally when I have a setup, I have my camera view on one screen and my work space on, one, on the other. But hey, we got to work with what we have here. Uh, so he jumps up. And then I want him to compress like that. So I'll delete this key. Uh, just, <clears throat> yeah, let me, let me go over some of my settings here. Uh, I basically always uh, have the local location, rotation, scale, and custom properties. I, I want to key everything that, that I can key. Uh, I don't want to have the pop-up every time, you know, when, whenever. Do you want to key this, this, and this? Now, just I don't want to be distracted by, by uh, too many micromanagement of that. I just put in my keys and I would like, I'd like to animate drunk and edit sober. So that's kind of like my, my motto. Um, so we go down and then go big like that. And then go a bit smaller. And let's see, uh, I'm just gonna copy these keys over a bunch of times. Oh. Until it kind of like lifts off. And you might think, what? <laughs> what is this guy doing? I'm the same. <laughs> you know, with animation, you, you try things out and you see how it works. Let's see, let me turn off everything. <laughs> you feel that fart, you feel the fart. All right, let's add a little bit more anticipation on, well, it might be a bit too much. Let me, I love the blend to neighbor. I set it as my default uh, shortcut, shift E, basically blending between frames. This is the tween machine of Maya basically. And uh, this is a tool I use uh, multiple times per minute. Um, so I think that's, that's a great tool. So let me go back a bit. I did like it a little bit more extreme. I want to dissipate that a bit more. So let's see. So we could incorporate that a little bit with, with the squash and stretch up the jump. Right now there's nothing there, it's all quite linear. So, uh, and also there's not really a, a, a stretch going on, so we could push that as well. And also it's going off screen a bit slow. Let me see if I can push that, just push those keys around a little bit. Like that. And then let's focus a little bit more on those first steps. Uh, 
So and also create a bit of more a bit of offset between the two legs. Um, and for clarity, let me there. There's a double IK bone here. Uh, I'm gonna just hide these and work with, with these guys. So jumping up. And when it's jumping to this position, I would love to have him a, a bit more of a broader stance simply to em emphasize the, the squash and the anticipation in the beginning. <laughs> so here we go, right here. Oh, I got that enabled, no. And then add a bit of rotation before we land. Actually, turn this to local, that. I want a bit more, oh, wait. There's something about watching an animator live that's, uh, <laughs> you know, can be uh, quite um, peaceful. Or my, some might say, uh, you know, langweilig. Um, so, let's see. I want to place those keyframes a bit earlier, like that. And then the other one. Now for the other one, I, I'd rather want it to stay, and I'm going to be a bit quick and dirty here. But stay one more frame, so we create a little bit of that offset one going up, and then, oh. And then here. Going a bit wider. Also create a bit more like that. Okay, now let's push a little bit more of that squash uh, in there by just, before we lift off, you know, push it down, maybe scale it in a little bit, see how that, w how that looks. And you know, <laughs> I'm kind of the uh, trial and error kind of animator, just trying things out, especially with a cube. And then right here, we definitely want to go a bit extreme and see. That uh, might be a bit too much. Also, we, I need to take care of the oh, spacing here. That might be a bit harsh, so let's see. Key here, delete there. And then, just want to see a bit of, mm, let me just grab one of these guys. So before takeoff, I always, I also want to make sure these guys stay, stay around. There is a, a space switch uh, on, on the, uh, the actual uh, IK feed where you can make sure they, they stay in one place. Um, you know, if you're normally, <laughs> if I had more time, I would put in a bit more care into placing these feet in world space, have the thing lift off, but since we, uh, we only got a couple of minutes, well, we got how many time? Yeah, 20 minutes left. Let's, uh, let's go a bit quick and dirty here. So basically, I want the same thing what I did earlier. Place a key here and then go into the animation tab and copy, paste. So we got a little bit more stick to it and then also maybe scale it down. And basically what I'm looking for is, is general shape. I don't care really about the, and maybe we want that key back. 
I'm looking for, especially with this cube, you know, uh, what is the general shape change uh, gonna gonna do? Um, so, same for this guy. Key, copy. Maybe this guy is still a little bit more on the floor. Pushing in that. And then we go back. I'll just grab a frame from here. And then. Let me just go a little bit into what I like about this or what I don't like actually about this is that this uh, cube this uh, vertice is so like that and then it comes out again let me you know want to keep it a bit more like that okay so there's a bit more uh you know uh, volume change going on um, you know, yeah. <clears throat> the only time to stop animating is when a director tells you to stop or a supervisor. So I could <laughs> keep on, you know, nitpicking, but sometimes uh, there's simply no time left. Okay, so let's watch it, the whole shot here. Cube coming in. Okay, let's do some grease pencil stuff. I think it's f time to add in some visual farts here. Uh, <laughs> I'm improvising, okay. Um, so, from here, we basically go to object mode, and then I always tend to make a, a stroke because it gives me already some presets. Go to the grease pencil and then delete. And I want to make sure that whatever we're drawing on is going to be at the 3D cursor. In this case, it could be, uh, 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 you know, the origin because we're working uh, close to the origin. Uh, for Sprite Fright, I, we really put the 3D cursor where the character was, so it all lines up. So if you uh, we're seeing anything that we did with effects on Sprite Fright. We uh, uh, painted in splashes with uh, grease pencil and then converted that to, to uh, actual geometry. Uh, but it was very important that it was put in 3D space wherever the character was. Uh, so let's put it right there. And then let's see. Drawing pencil, it's there. I guess it's green because I've turned on random colors. Yes, ah, okay, that's fine. I mean, it's, it's a fart, it can be green. So, <laughs> let's, let's try this, okay. Bear with me, guys. And the first pass, especially here, same thing, like animate drunk, just get some rough sketches in there, see how, how that's going. Uh, you could say like uh, <clears throat> uh, constrain the actual stroke object to, to, the, um, to, the, um, uh, to the rig, basically to make it follow. Uh, that might be a good idea actually. Um, ah, let's just wing it today. So we got a bit like that. Then the cheeks open up, so. Something like that. And 
then, obviously, the puff. Oh, wait. Do we? Ah, there we go. Get to find the center. The puff spreads out, and this is where real fart physics come in. Like that. Let's see. And then this will bundle up. Let me also turn on onion skinning. Why not? Uh, here. Ah, and then I got to turn on everything else, I guess. Um, let's see. Bones. There. There we go. So we go a bit more like that. And this is like, with, especially with these effects shots that we did, uh, before you go really into the nitty gritty details of fine lines and whatnot, uh, you want to, I, I, I'd like to start the conversation with the director as quickly as possible, see if this is something that works. So that's why I really kind of like sketch it out uh, on the fly and, and, and then uh, show that as a first pass kind of a thing. So. Okay, and this goes even bigger. And we, you know, <laughs> looking at uh, fart simulation, uh, it tends to really go into this circular, circular vortex that's going on. Um, you know, I did some video reference, but I'm not going to show. Uh, like that. So, and then we go a bit bigger. as we almost lift off quite a bit of frames. I should have done it, <laughs> make it a bit faster. Uh, whoopa, and uh, whoop. All the lines are getting smaller and smaller, but hey. Yeah, I should animate on twos, but that's the thing, right? It's animated on one, so, and I should, but I want to make that contact on the floor, so that's a bit of a, so. This one is a bit big, actually. Let me uh, get this a bit smaller. But I mean, yeah, I, I really, to me, what really uh, uh, kind of like convinced me or like like really drew me to Blender is the uh, the amazing multi uh, multiple tools that combine that are combined with, including the the, the grease pencil tool. Not only for uh, you know these silly effects, but also uh, just sketching out a blocking pass, or uh, and the, you can already do it in the shot, and that's so amazing. It's really cool. <clears throat> oh man, this is taking forever. <laughs> So meanwhile, let's, uh, <clears throat> we got some room for, for questions. If you guys uh, feel free to, to uh, put up your hand. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. And I can quick, slowly draw and continue on this fart. Hey. First of all, amazing presentation. Ah, thank you. Uh, it really depends on what style of animation you're looking for. Uh, th there's a lot of cheating going on with more extreme uh, cartoony animation. We uh, some some of the stuff we did on Spider Verse. It was not even a character. It was just a bunch of lines that were that were just smacked against. And it, it really depends on 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 how far you can push that. If you go more into realistic animation, uh, you might. You know, if you have the budget for it, you might add a muscle system that really retains that. Uh, that's some, some way to, to do that. Uh, but ultimately, um, um, you know, it's, it's an iteration process where you feel like, oh, this might, might lose the volume. Let's uh, reduce the amount of squash and stretch going on. So um, to me, it's, a, it's, it's a really about uh, a feeling of, of something. So yeah. And then we get 
What yes. What is your favorite principle of animation? <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can see, straight ahead. <laughs> I mean, there, there, there's, yeah. Um, for a live demo, it's I think a bit, a bit different than uh, than when I sit down on my own and have a bit of, like, to me, it's really going into the, the zone as they call it, where you, you know, go into your blocking and 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 and, and, and I'm a very much. As, you, as I'm contradicting myself here, uh, uh, um, blocking my animation in stepped or in, in constant keys and really work from there to get a, a proper foundation. Um, so, something like that. Yes, hi. Uh, okay, I have two questions. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So how do you go about when you receive such a rig and you're, you have to animate it? Do you like explore it first to see like all of its limits and constraints? And then uh, my second question is, uh, when you're telling everybody about Blender Conference 2022, will you tell them that you uh, animated a fart in food for 20 minutes? <laughs> in front of the people? In the front of the people, yeah. yes, yes. It's, uh, well, first question, uh, first answer, um, uh, um, when I joined the, the Spider-Verse production, you know, the first week you really get time to get used to the rigs and the, the tools that were available. Um, uh, but, but you also rely a lot on, on post libraries. On, uh, and, and, and what's also very common is to use a character Bible, which basically con uh, includes um, um, do's and don'ts with the rig, like uh, what kind of uh, shapes to use, um, uh, where to put the, the ink lines and whatnot. So, so that's it, it's we did something similar for Sprite Fright to really have the team of animators uh, have a, a set of rules that uh, make the the overall animation more consistent. And uh, about the farting cube, yes, that's uh, <laughs> that's basically what we're doing here. So, anybody, anyone else? Yes. Uh, when you're working in big productions, now I'm talking about this character Bible and also a post library. How much can yeah. you share across multiple animators when you collaborate? And how much do you have to kind of, can you use each other or do you need to compete with each other? How much do you share them? Um, um, now, uh, the, the, the whole point of having a character Bible, having a post library, is to share it. So, so uh, as well as having. Uh, established poses for uh, uh, by by the supervisors that have explored like the the characters and established the style of of certain poses. That's kind of like the that's what I'm. I remember that's kind of like the poses that everybody was allowed to uh, choose from. But then there you had your own personal folder where you could put in. Uh, uh, you know, custom poses or uh, poses that you would save to in order to um, uh, have a, a good hookup for the next shot for the other animator. So, so it's it's generally yeah the purpose of having a, a post library to really share that and, and collaborate with each other. Oh, you mean the the poses for the post library? Um, sorry. Yeah, so, so you basically store your poses within a blend file, and that's a separate file that you can basically pack, and, and, and the post library that, uh, I don't think I have it installed here. Um, yeah, I mean, well, it's in there, or is this the old one? I don't know. Pose mode, ah, that's it, pose mode. But then, 
Uh, let's see. Will this part ever end? <laughs> Uh, edits, preferences. I think there was a, um, a, um, and I can't remember in this setup, but <laughs> uh, there is actually a folder that you can link to, and in that way you can set up your, your folders uh, within the preferences, and that will li automatically link to uh, uh, the post library what, what, and that you can share to, to other people as well. Will this fart ever end? Yeah. Let's draw this a bit quicker. My drawings get uglier and uglier. <laughs> I see more. Ah, okay, so the time is up. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot. Oh, we cannot finish the fart. No. Oh no! <laughs> but hey, this file is included with the package of the default cube. You can an animate as many farts as you want. Um, and next time, if you open Blender, you see the default cube. Think about the soul of what this might be. It's not the cube. It's in your head. Now, thank you very much. And, uh, I'll finish this. <laughs>